Greetings, faithful followers. Welcome to another edition of Movie Night Live from the Monastery of Mayhem and the Angry Brothers Omaha Shakarama. I'm your host, Brother Jack Angry, and tonight we're bringing you a, a, a little. Fuck, 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 cut, cut, cut. All right, three, two, one, go. Well, greetings, faithful followers. This is your old pal, Brother Jack Angry, bringing you another edition of Movie Night Live from the Monastery of Mayhem and the Angry Brothers Omaha Shakarama. Uh, tonight, in addition to uh, the movie, which is House of Whipcord, uh, delightfully despicable little piece of celluloid cinema from our good friends across the pond in the UK, we're bringing you a special little shout out to a good friend of the show, uh, Miss Miyatsu Kumiko from Denver, Colorado. Great friend of the show. Um, we've been a fan of hers for a long, a long time. We've followed her on Twitter and Facebook and a few other places. A really great little gal, and you'll be you'll find out why when you see our little uh, little shout out to her at the end of the show. We also want to throw a big shout out to all the members of the Denver Adult Writers Club or DARK. Uh, this is one of uh, Miyatsu's favorite organizations. She's a, a member in good standing of this organization. She attends a lot of their rallies and events. Um, if you're in the Denver area and you want to find out more about DARK, look them up online at www.darkdarc.com. Uh, and uh, Miyatsu, this, this episode is lovingly dedicated to you. You're one of the coolest gals we know. And if uh, Inferna and Lady Tord and Brother James and the rest of the gang were here, they'd agree wholeheartedly. So let's get on with the show, okay? Great. We've got our, uh, our friends with us, Brother Reggie and Waxy the Demonic Candle. We never really know what he's going to say or when he's going to say it. Um, we've got our uh, favorite bottle of uh, adult beverage here and... You know, if I've been doing this show for all, almost five years, and if there's one thing I know about is alcohol. Um, I don't want to say Brother Jack has a drinking problem, but I drink, I get drunk, no problem. Yeah, I, I hear the rest of you. I hear you all out there snickering about that, you know. He gets drunk. <laughs> you bet your sweet ass I do, and a lot, believe me. I mean, you, 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 you try to find movie you've tried to find movies to bring to you people it's like every week we get cards and letters well we want more movies we want more movies well you know what i'm already breaking half the public uh, copyright laws as it is to bring you the movies i do show you give me a break people if you're an independent uh, film producer and you deal in whore exploitation grindhouse um tna shock schlock um you know Anything in, except anything involving farm animals, we want to see your work here at the Angry Brothers Omaha Shakarama. You can Google us, uh, you'll find our webpage, and that has an address that you can either send your submissions to us or just drop me an email at theangrybros at gmail.com and I'll get back in touch with you and we'll make arrangements for have you to have you get a copy of the film to us and we'll get it on the show. We do have national coverage, we're on 10 Roku channels. Seven public access networks across the country, five online networks, including uh, uh, the Vortex, Indie Horror TV, um, and we have our Vimeo channel, which is thriving, our YouTube channel. We're also on KPAO Omaha Public Access, so we can get you a lot of coverage, a lot of exposure for not a lot of uh, 
of green. If we like your film, hell, we'll do it for free. You know, we've never turned anybody away yet. Um, also want to give a big shout out to our, our friend uh, down in Biloxi, Mississippi, and Miss Dawn DeVerger. She is the organizer and one of the guiding forces behind the Geek Novicon convention. This is, I believe, the second one that they've done. They've had a great run. Look them up. Uh, Dawn DeVerger, former Scream Queen. Uh, we're still waiting on those movies, Dawn. You know, it's like, I, I know I sent you my, my address to have you mail me a, a several of them so we can get them on the show for you. But anyway, tonight's movie is a rather delightfully depraved and debauched little piece um, called The House of Whipcord. Now, in this film, we have a old man who lives in a a uh, British country estate, looks more like something Dracula would hang out in, but he fancies himself as being a moral individual, and you notice the uh, quotation, the air quotes on the word moral, it's like, you know, don't get Brother Jack started on that, there's a lot of moral people here in Omaha, and we know all about you people, you sick little monkeys. And speaking of sick little monkeys, we want to throw out a, another shout out to our good friend Chris McCabe, aka Oliver of Oliver's Twisted Bargain Basted Stoner Friendly uh, Midnight Movie Freak Show. I think I got all that there. It's like, damn, that title's long. Jesus, Oliver, could you have come up with anything longer? Good Lord, I think I just gave myself a hernia saying it. But anyway, all of, um, Chris McCabe, aka Oliver, is the guiding force behind that. Uh, that show, and he broadcasts out of Sarasota, Florida, if I'm not mistaken. Um, great friend of the show, great guy, uh, front man of the band Murdered by Robots. Um, you've seen a lot of uh, his stuff on our show. Great, great partnership. Also want to throw out a good shout to our friend Uncle Edward in Lexington uh, Forge, Kentucky. Uh, and Ed, Uncle Edward is host of It Came From The Basement. Two really great shows. Look them up on YouTube. You'll be glad you did. So anyway, the, um, this British, uh, moral British gentleman lives in an old decaying country estate. And he has several uh, matrons working for him who go out and abduct young girls and present them to the old man as uh, they are... Uh, they are immoral and in need of punishment, and they proceed to inflict uh, various whippings, tortures, I think there's a few hangings in there. I mean, really good, wholesome BDS&M stuff. And for, you know, all of our, our kinkster friends here in Omaha and all of our BDS&M uh, loving friends, this episode's for you. So, without further ado, we're going to... Uh, Bring, uh, we're going to get on with tonight's movie, The House of Whipcord, here on the Angry Brothers Omaha Shockorama. In <laughs> Very easily learnt on entering this institution. Mr. Cheshire, shut up. One is that instructions are given to be obeyed. The other is that each officer is addressed as madam. You are charged with conspiring to pervert the course of justice. How do you plead? Guilty or not guilty? Why, my aunt? What is ma? Speak on your spell or two. Our sentence, Desmond. She's a dangerous psychopath and must be hanged immediately. <laughs> Sure. At least I'm spared the anguish of gazing at your poor, tormented face. When I was a Fendi, pluck them out, Desmond. Pluck it? Pluck them out, I say. First offender, aren't you, Manny? Well, by tonight, you'll be... Ah! 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 Ah
no good big fishes, Master Wayne. <laughs> Fortunate I was passing. You wouldn't believe this, but nobody at that party, not one of those people, knows anything about Mark Desart. Not even Ted. They was pissed. I don't like it, Tony. I really don't. <laughs> of whipcord so far. I was just having a little bit of an adult beverage here while enjoying all of the, the whippings, the hangings. I mean, really great stuff. I mean, if you're going to, uh, you know, if you're going to watch a movie about uh, uh, a guy who the main character is named Mark E. Desaad, um, you know, you're going to want to have a drink in your hand for that. And, you know, it's like, if it wasn't for alcohol, I don't think I could do this as long as what I have. But I love what I... I love what I do, and I do what I love, and I never have to worry about, I can never worry about calling it work, because it's a, definitely a labor of love, people. Uh, but anyway, what did you think of the, of the scene where the old, where Marquis, young Marquis de Sade is going to the hip British uh, cocktail party? You know, it's like, it's near jackets, tab collars, and suede coats as far as the eye can see. You know, it looks like somebody from... Uh, Aid Ashbury or Paisley Brothers fucking exploded on the screen. Um, uh, the, the 70s are not a time that are, that's remembered fondly in England because, I mean, the only thing you really had to listen to was Chad and Jeremy and the Beatles, you know, and uh, Herman's Hermits. And let's face it, the clothing really sucked. I mean, suede vests, Paisley shirts, bell-bottom pants, you know, and fringes everywhere kind of makes me air sick just thinking about it. Now, the only good thing that came out of the 60s and 70s, either in America or in England, was mini skirts and go-go boots. You know, it's like, you know, still does it for old brother Jack. I mean, you know, it's like put a put a put a put an attractive girl in a mini skirt and a pair of go-go boots or thigh boots and brother jacks all over that shit like white on rice believe me um but anyway uh yeah brother jack uh, digresses i mean i'm gonna start uh i don't want to start um you know i don't want to break out the uh, lotion and tissues right here and don't worry people that's that's not going to happen you know it's like we, we're not doing that we're not doing that again you know but anyhow uh, House of Whipcord, right. This movie uh, was filmed and released in the year 1974, which was the height of the mod culture in Britain, particularly London. London being a center, a uh, cosmopolitan center. It was where all the nightlife was. It was where all the, the best bands played, including, uh, um, you know, the Beatles. Uh, you know, the, the Liverpool sound was really big, big, big in uh, London at that time. Um, the British Film Censorship Commission banned House of Whipcord for, set, for viewing in the UK. Uh, that means London, Scot or I'm sorry, England, Scotland, and Ireland, on the grounds that the subject matter was too uh, morally, uh, morally co corrosive, uh, and they were worried that this this film was widely viewed. It would turn everybody into a bunch of BDSM loving freaks. You know, uh, I'm sorry, I, I've been to London, and, you know, dealing with the English, it's like, they, they shouldn't have worried. They were already that way before this movie ever came out. You know, it's like, you want to see a kinky bastard, you show me an Englishman. Yeah, it's like, they, they, you know, what can you say, but they're a bunch of freaks. You know, some skeletons in them closets, believe me. You know, and... Me and Reggie know all about skeletons, don't we, uh, Reg? He's not talking today. It's like, he, he's ignoring me. If he had his hands, he'd be, I'm pretty sure he'd be doing this to me, you know? It's like, well, okay, Reggie, you can just sit there and, and pout for a little while. 
Well, look at it this way, friends. It's cheaper than therapy, and I don't have to worry about being drug tested. But anyway, back to the movie uh, House of Ripcord. A little bit of interesting trivia about this film. You'll see a scene, uh, you either have seen or will see a scene coming up where the gal, uh, one of the uh, inmates, uh, Karen, is hanged for her indiscretions. Now, you will see a, the scene where the matron of the house is weighing and measuring her uh, because what she is doing is what's called the long drop method of hanging. Now, this was a method of hanging that was quite popular. It actually was originated in, uh, it was actually originated in Europe about the time of Napoleon and uh, using several mathematical calculations based on the victim's height, weight, and body type. Uh, you would, uh, the executioner would work out exactly how much rope was needed to hang the person uh, and how much slack on the rope because you had to get a drop of several feet to basically snap the neck cleanly and not decapitate the, uh, the victim because if you have too long a drop you're going to basically the weight of the body is going to just pull the head right off like a cork right out of a bottle and we all know that's going to be messy or if you have too small of a drop all you're not going to break the neck cleanly. Uh, you may not break the neck at all, and then this poor individual is going to die a death of slow strangulation, you know, at the end of a rope. So uh, the English, uh, English uh, exec executioners, which was actually, they actually had a guild, uh, a labor guild, uh, that dealt with the executioners at the time, uh, and that goes all the way back to the 1400s. It was... They had standards and practices on how to behead, uh, how to strangle, either with the bare hands, a garrote, or a rope, uh, how to drown. Uh, they had actually practices and standards, and each member of this uh, guild was a master of his own particular craft in, in execution. And this was an actual functioning British labor union, labor guild, uh, up until, I believe, the early 1900s, when it was disbanded by the... Uh, by, the, by royal order of the Queen uh, and uh, Parliament because at the time in the early 1900s the electric chair was all the rage and you know they felt it was the ultimate in humanely uh, executing someone uh, you didn't need to calculate lengths of rope or how much slack you needed to break someone's neck or how sharp the blade had to be to you know and that way you didn't bungle the job and, and make a mess all over the place um, everybody was going to the electric chair at that time and, you know, this guild was disbanded and there were a lot of executioners out of work. You know, and that's, we think, where the British BDS and M scene came from because, let's face it, they already had the wardrobe for it. You know, we knew it was coming. Uh, I, I'm getting a really blank look from uh, Sanjay, the ca my cameraman here. I think we just blew his mind. You okay, Sanjay? Hello? Come on, Sanjay. Come on. Come back to me. Here. Here, boy. Here, boy. Here, boy. Well, it's like... Okay. I, okay. Wait, wait a minute. The lights are on. I think somebody's home with Sanjay. Um, yeah. Yeah. Put the finger down, Sanjay. I, I see that. You know, it's like, don't wor forget, I can still make one phone call and you're going to be working in a sneaker factory in Mumbai. Uh, don't, don't, don't test with me, bitch. Don't test me, bitch. I will send you back there in a heartbeat. Uh, you and your little brown, you, you, all your little brown children, you know? It's like, jeez. It's like, I went over to his house last night for dinner. Oh, it's all some of these kids running around. What are you doing? Are you breeding up a soccer team or something? God. It's like, what was it? Named his first two kids, first set of twins, Adolf and Rudolph. He had another set of twins. He asked me what I should name them. How about get off and stay off? You ever think of that, you bastard? You know, for Freddy over here, it's like, God, you know, kids are cute, but damn it, they grow up into people, and people are annoying. Jeez. Anyway, yeah, just get back behind the camera, Sanjay. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, quit, quit flipping me off. You're flipping me off. Stop it. He's back here doing this to me, you know? He thinks I'm not going to get up out of this chair and walk over there and proceed to beat his ass? Yeah. Well, we'll deal with him after the show. Anyhow, anyway, people, um, the House of Whipcord, we will see, uh, and for, again, for our BDS, BDS and M friends, 
Let's see if you can spot all the various bondage devices in this movie. I'll give you a hint. Obviously, we've seen the standard ones. We've seen the whips. We've seen the chains. Um, now, here's a little trivia. The big cross that the uh, girl is uh, tied to and whipped repeatedly. What's the name of that and why is it called that? And you can talk amongst yourselves. And we'll have the answer for that when we come back from the break here on the house, or here on the Angry Brothers Omaha Shockorama, bringing you House of Whipcord, starring nobody ever I ever really heard of. Um, the movie does star Richard e. Taman as Mark E. Desaad, and it's like whoever wrote this, it's like uh, you know, it's like you need to present your ass to me so I can kick it. It's like Mark E. Desaad, <laughs> great, you know. Really original there, but we're going to get back to the movie House of Whipcord from 1974 here on the Angry Brothers Omaha Shakarama. Enjoy. <laughs> You're late. I, uh... on the table, all of them, and your shoes.
Is there something the matter with your hearing? What? Dear, dear, seems to be, doesn't there? You are both deaf and insolent. Who are you? What is this place? Where is Monsieur Desart? There are two rules very easily learnt on entering this institution. Institution? Shut up! One is that instructions are given to be obeyed. The other is that each officer is addressed as madam. I... I should not be here. I should not be here... what? I don't understand. I don't understand. You are not in this room to understand. You are in this room to be bathed and checked for vermin before putting on your uniform. Now get your clothes off. I will not. This is not where I should be. I was got to find Monsieur Desart. He is <laughs> Continue the customary reception routine. Since you are not willing to undress yourself, you will have to be stripped. Bates? No, please. Let me go. I will do it. Please, well, tell me. Well, faithful followers, welcome back. What did you think of House of Whipcord from 1974? Wasn't this movie kind of, uh, kind of, uh, bdsm -y and kind of kinky in a really kind of scary sort of way? Yeah, I know it's a British film. I mean, it's like, you know, they're going for all that psychological bullshit, you know. Um, uh, you know, uh, Brother Jack's a pretty simple simple individual. He's a, he's a meat and potatoes kind of guy. You know, it's like, I mean, if you're going to have a movie where a bunch of women are tied up, it's like, you know, uh, don't waste time with all the whipping. And I mean, it's like, you know, where where's the other action? I didn't see too much other action, you know. It's like... You know, no, 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 no strap-ons, you know, no pegging, uh, you know, no, you know, freaky-deaky, you know, no, none of that, you know, no freaky-deaky, I mean, bunch of gals being whipped and hung, you know, it's like, well, okay, it's like, it, it was worth, it was worth the time it took me to download this film and, and bring it to you, and very few other horror hosts are running this, and after watching the film, okay, now I figured out why. Yeah, I know, this movie blows goat, but hey, you know, the acting was kind of overrated, and we won't even talk about the character name, I mean, Mark E. Desaad, I mean, that would be like naming your type of your main character John Q. Public or something, it's like, good lord, can't you, you know, I know you're English and everything, but show a little originality, for God's sakes, it's like, Although the uh, the gal the gals who played the various victims, particularly uh, Julia, played by French model uh, Michelle Ann, uh, was you know quite attractive. The little shower scene where she's uh, where she's you know getting out of her clothes to be issued her uniform. I mean, that was you know for our friends at Mr. Skin. You know, I love that Mr. Skin. Um, not a bad, not a bad, you know, nice. Nice TNA shot, you know, can't complain about that. Made it worth the time it took me to watch this thing. Um, uh, back to our trivia question. All right, here, and here was our question. What was the name of the big cross that the gal was tied to while being whipped, and why is it called that? Any, qu any, any ideas? Any ideas? Any at all? Hello? I'm getting a blank look from Sanjay. It's like, yeah, so, you know, Sanjay's going, why would people they, why would people tie people to crosses and whip them? This does not make any sense. Yeah, it's like, okay, San, Sanjay, don't don't try to don't, don't try to overthink it. We don't don't hurt yourself. You know, like I said, Sanjay's mind is blown right now, so it's like, don't hurt yourself. We don't want to we don't want you to injure anything. The answer to the question, uh, faithful followers, is a St. Andrew's cross. Basically, it's a diag it is a diagonal cross uh, with the uh, with the in the shape of a basically the letter X. Uh, and the reason it's called the St. Andrew's cross is because it was originally it was originally devised by in Scotland, Edinburgh, by a local uh, Scottish lord who had a proclivity for bondage and discipline and sadism. Um, he got the idea when looking at the flag of Scotland, uh, which goes back to the Middle Ages. Uh, you'll see it on a field of blue, and it's a white X, and it stretches to all four corners of the flag. Uh, so the flag is called the St. Andrew's Cross because the, uh, the flag, or the cross on the Scottish flag, is the cross of St. Andrew, 
which you know it, it's a Catholic thing. You know, it's like um, look look it up, do a little research. Brother Jack can't tell you everything. Now a little bit more trivia about this movie. Um, they had some casting difficulties um, with the movie, particularly casting the part of the matrons. The, uh, the main matron, uh, they wanted to hire a British a actress named Peggy Cummings to play her, but um, if you've researched any of her roles, you'll, you'll see she's a very attractive woman. Um, and they felt she was too, basically she was too sexually provocative and too um, uh, striking as, uh, as a beautiful woman to convincingly play the role. Um, I guess they didn't want this to be th anybody to thinking this was going to suddenly turn into a porno film at the drop of a hat. It's not like, you know, uh, the saxophone music was going to come up in the background and these girls were going to break out a bunch of strap-on dildos. Although, that's a movie I would have watched. <laughs> I would download that shit in a minute. Yes, I know, Brother Jack's a kinky bastard, but hey, it's, uh... It's 9 o'clock a.m. on a Wednesday morning. What else have I got to do? And i got to be at work in a little while. So it's, i got a long week ahead of me, friends. You know, I'm not thrilled about this. But anyway, you know, i, I just got to do what i got to do. And, you know, the holidays are coming up. want to give a big shout-out to our friend uh, in West Wendover, Nevada. Um, good, buddy of, good buddy of Brother Jack's. Long-time supporter of the show. Uh... We go back about 20, 20 plus years. Uh, Michael Ashelman, um, he is a teacher with the West Wendover School District. Uh, he teaches, I believe, high school science. You know, it's like, so what can we say but drink up, Mike. You're going to need it. Uh, him and his uh, family, this is their, they've recently arrived, come back from China and with his wife and uh, two and two sons and this is going to be their first christmas in this country in quite a while so let's everybody give them a big shout out uh big angry brothers welcome to a uh, good friend of the show michael ashelman now as we said earlier we're dedicating tonight's show to a very very good friend um one of the coolest gals i know i've as i said i followed her on facebook and twitter and a few other places for years uh, Miss Miyatsu Kumiko, uh, member of the Denver Adult Writers Club, or DARK, uh, again, great organization. If you want to find out more, check them out, www.darc.com. Uh, we're going to be doing a little presentation here momentarily. Um, you know, some really great pictures of uh, Miyatsu, all suitable for public display. I mean, we can't show you any of the good stuff, um, but, you know... That, that them's the breaks but very very pretty lady uh, great gal love her to death uh, this one's for you Mia and again thanks for being one of our best supporters in Denver well I'm brother Jack angry and next week we're going to be bringing you another you know delightfully bad piece of cinema uh, from the vaults under the Monastery of Mayhem, which we like to call The Sewers. But hey, th these aren't bad films. Wait a minute, what, what the hell am I saying? Yes, they are. They're bad. They suck, some of them. But we still bring them to you. Uh, we'll try to dig up some more Jerry Williams films. We've had a lot of really great feedback on those. Lots of cards and letters and emails coming in. Our film we ran uh, last week, Saucer Sex Bomb, that was a great hit. Um, we ran Santa Krampus a f uh, several weeks back, you know, kind of our pre-Christmas salute, and you guys love it. You went crazy for it. You want more. So that's why we're putting the word out. If you're an indie horror producer and you want to get your stuff shown nationally, national exposure, coast to coast, and internationally, for some unknown reason, we are just big in Europe and the UK, and uh, we're actually even getting big in Dubai. I checked the stats on our YouTube channel, and most of, uh, like, 40% of our viewership was coming out of Dubai. It's like, what the hell is up with that shit, you know? Do, do we translate that well into uh, Saudi, uh, or whatever, you know, or, or, or Fozzie, or whatever language they speak over there? I don't know. I mean, it's like... 
Uh, I mean, is a guy in green makeup and a black robe running around making bad jokes? Um, is that some kind of big cultural norm over there? I don't know. But for some reason, they love us in Dubai. Go figure. Well, the, this being uh, the close of another episode of the Angry Brothers Omaha Chakrama and Movie Night Live from the Monastery of Mayhem, you know, with the holiday season coming up, be good to your family, your friends. It's, you know, it's not the, 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 the gifts that we buy and what we spend. That's not the reason for the season. Um, you know, Brother Jack isn't going to go all uh, religious on it. But, you know, um, the, uh, the, the reason for the season should be spending time with your family, your loved ones, your friends. You know... Fellowship, peace on earth, goodwill towards men, and all of that. Those are the real reasons for the season. It's not about what you buy. It's about, you know, it's not about what you get. It's about what you give back. And that being said, you know, let, uh, let's wrap it up with our, you know, our motto here at the Angry Brothers Omaha, Shakarama. It's always better to ask for forgiveness than for permission. And let's keep America on top. Watch horror hosts, you all. Good night and happy holidays. And a little alcohol doesn't help either. Always remember that. This is the cause and solution to most of life's problems. Just exactly what I've been